welcome back to another episode of Public Opinion. You're with your hosts, Pam and Vanetta. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and Vanetta, last time that we uh, met in this type of a, um, atmosphere for the, a full show, we were talking about being grateful, thankful, and blessed, and yes. Thanksgiving was coming. So how was your Thanksgiving? It was one of the best Thanksgivings ever. We went to Florida, and I have a daughter now, a daughter-in-law, <laughs> and uh all of my family was together, my children and their significant others. So we just had a great time. That's I got wonderful. to see my mother, my cousin. And when you're in Florida, you can do nothing but smile. Oh, the my sun goodness. is there. Wasn't that nice? It was uh, nice. I had I had family over. We didn't have as big a crowd as I normally have. Okay. But we still had people over and we we just had such a good time. And the food was good. And it was your best it, food dinner ever, okay, right? <laughs> it was. And so now it's the uh the uh Christmas season. Right. And have you uh started or done any shopping yet? I've done a lot of shopping. Um I've gotten into the internet from COVID. Mm -hmm. So I've done some local shopping and um small businesses actually. I went to a craft fair oh, and nice. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in a good place. Yeah. You know what? I, there's been a whole lot of these pop-up shops and, yes. and craft fairs. And I actually really like those. I like local stores and right. boutiques because you can find things, unique things that you don't right. find other places. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just really important to support local businesses, especially since there's this supply chain issues and backups on deliveries mm -hmm. and that type of thing. But you know what? You can just look around your local area and see people who are in business, who are trying to still make it during this pandemic, right. you know, and recover from, you know, so many bad situations. So that's what our show is about today. We're going to talk about uh, shopping locally and uh, patronizing small businesses, doing businesses in your own community. Keeping the money as, right here in the our community. Money right here in our community. So we're going to get started and meet our participants for this week who are going to join us to talk about patronizing small businesses. First, we have Felicia Townsend Ivy. Felicia is the director of the Small Business Development Center hosted by the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. It is Felicia's passion to help business owners build, expand, and sustain their businesses. Then we have Erica Pennick. Erica is the executive director of the President's Council. As an engine for Black business growth, the President's Council supports, develops, and advocates for our region's current and future generations of Black entrepreneurs and leaders for sustainable wealth creation. Then we have Tandi Allen. Tandi is the co-founder of Urban City Codes, a culturally focused community-based tech training center. And finally, we have Tanya Manning Grant. Tanya is the creator and founder of Dress Code Boutique and Ashton's Corner Kids Clothing Boutique. So let's welcome our participants. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you all so much for agreeing to be participants on the show this week. And I'm looking forward to hearing what your response is to the public opinion question of the week. So we will get started and see what that public opinion question is. Why do you think it is important to patronize small businesses, especially during the holidays? All right. So we're going to get started. And what I am going to do is just give you all a couple of minutes to answer the question. So I am going to let Erica start and answer that question. Go ahead, Erica. I have a couple of points. So I think I have about five of them that I wanted to run down as to why it's important <laughs> to patronize small businesses. The first is that we recognize that small businesses and thriving communities are inextricably linked. So supporting local businesses is critical to generating income and investment in those communities, as well as attracting and retaining those needed community goods and services. The second is that the money spent with local businesses, especially small businesses, circulates and stays in the local community and it helps to create jobs and it also directly impacts and improves the local economy. And then the third is that taxes paid when one patronizes a small business 
supports local schools and roads, as well as all of our public safety services, such as police and fire. And then the fourth is small businesses hire about half of all workers in every state and they employ local people, which keeps our money right here in the local economy. And second to last is our local small businesses often offer items particular to the area, including locally sourced food items, um, textiles, they use local artisans, manufacturers, and delivery services. And from local restaurants, transportation companies, retailers, hair salons, barbershops, pet groomers, beauty supply stores, um, patronizing small businesses directly contributes to the vitality of the local communities. And last but not least, and I think one of the most important issues right now is that with the supply chain issues and a growing list of shortages causing higher prices and delays with holiday shopping, patronizing with local small businesses not only helps keep them open and thriving, but it also guarantees you'll have your gifts in time for the holidays. Wonderful. That's an excellent answer. And you're co you covered a lot of the things that I want to talk about uh, this evening as well. So we also are going to hear from Tandy next. So go ahead, Tandy. Um, I would say most important um, reason to support uh, small local businesses, especially Black-owned businesses, is uh, building up that business to a level where they can actually hire people. Um, I've seen I've seen it all too well where um, Black people who are you know going to school, um, getting certifications, learning about different things, uh, can't find work um, because maybe the industry that they're in. Um, is does not look like them. Um, maybe there's a uphill battle. Maybe there's more um, some culturally uh, some cultural differences there that might um, become an obstacle or a barrier. And I think that um, local businesses are really there and could support all of these people who are looking for jobs. Um, we don't always have to learn a skill and then run off to a corporation. There are companies right here who need um, your skills and your talent. Um, and just to give you an example, with us, we're culturally focused tech training. Well, well, everything touching some level of technology, there are local companies right here that need access to uh, people who are learning tech skills, even basic tech skills, or basic marketing or social media management skills or design skills, that if you were supporting them and patronizing them, they would have the money now to hire people in these roles and it would keep, it would change the economic landscape for, for us and black people. And we won't have to run to the big corporations to get a tech job or worse, uh, what do they call it? Brain, brain, brain dump, where they're, where they're just leaving, brain, brain drain. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just leaving all together to find work. And it is sad because we, we have people right here who need um, who need talent? So I think that's really the most important thing to me um, is as workforce development. Very good. All right, and finally, Tanya, you want to go ahead and answer that? I think a lot of what Erica said really resonated because I'm seeing that right now. So both of my stores, Dress Code and Ashton's Corner, are online and located within Beachwood Mall. So for me, it's Yes, supporting the Beachwood community because that's for the most part who's shopping in my store, supporting my store, but I like to think beyond that. For me, it's it's all about mentorship. It's seeing ourselves in these particular roles outside of our corporate America, you know, duties and responsibilities. So, you know, for instance, I have a lot of young women that shop in my store and will say to me, how did you get started? You know, what did you do? Um, did you go to school? You know, how do I open up a boutique? How do I operate one? So being able to be that mentor to these mentees that really want to know how to do it. Yes, there's a lot of stores opening up. There's a lot of boutiques opening up. I mean, this the retail business, the boutique business is a $3.4 trillion industry, right? So there's a lot of room for a lot of different people to play in. But what I think a lot of young people are missing 
And this is one of the reasons why I enjoy my platform, my stores, and having these conversations when they walk into the store is that they're missing the behind the scenes. All they see is the pretty racks, the pretty clothing. They don't understand the economics behind it. They don't understand the need for capital funding. They don't understand the need to learn how to maneuver a supply chain situation. Erica hit it right on the head. Whereas a lot of chain, larger chain stores are having issues because the containers are still sitting on the water getting goods and services. Because I'm smaller at this juncture, I'm getting them quicker and faster. So I have things readily available that some of the other stores don't. I have different looks because within my boutique, we carry you know more modern and chic, more edgy, upscale looks. So we don't carry a lot of everything. So people like it because they will say, wow, that's really nice, it's really different. I don't see it other places. So I said all that to say that I think it's important to shop small businesses, especially black owned businesses, because you see yourself, number one. Number two, you're automatically in that mentor role, whether it's a younger person, whether it's an older person to talk to what it truly means to be an entrepreneur. Because to me, it goes beyond saying, I own a business. Well, what does that truly mean? in terms of funding that business, operating that business, staffing that business, because I also have a pretty demanding corporate job. It's about what's in here and what our, our, our buying power is. When I say buying power is educating ourselves, becoming more literate, going beyond that, you know, I'm buying my first home. No, let's talk about the conversation should be about Let's buy commercial property. Let's invest in commercial property. The conversation needs to be more about, hey, I'm investing in my own business, but like Erica and Tandy did with me, invested in my business, like I'm doing with other Black women, investing in their business. So right. when you shop a, a Black-owned business, you're actually investing in somebody's dream. Oh, I like what you said. You're investing in somebody else's dream, and that is absolutely correct. All right, now, Felicia, I'm going to give you the opportunity to answer that question. Go ahead. It is so important for us to shop small businesses during Christmas time. Small businesses really are making up, we're the fastest growing employers in the United States. In the state of Ohio, small businesses employ 2.2 million individuals. Wow. I mean, that's significant. So that's about 49% of all um, private employers, or should I say people who are employed by private employers. So it's, it's so very important. And then I feel it's still very important for us to shop right in our own community. So communities got blighted or what can I say communities really got the short leg when the big box stores kind of came in such as Walmart and then we started leaving our communities and then we went out so and you guys are a little mature like I am so you can probably remember back in the day when we all went to the corner store we went to the dry cleaner in our neighborhoods and our neighborhoods were vibrant. They weren't vacant, they weren't blighted. So that's what we need to get back to. We're seeing that in the majority neighborhoods right now where they are building complexes where you work here, play here, stay here, because they know that's what you need as a community to bring that economic balance and to make the community strong. You gotta keep it in the community. All right, thank you. And you know, along those lines, and uh, what I was talking about to you uh, a little while ago was I was watching uh, or listening to Joe Madison, yeah. and there was a, I can't remember, was it a senator or a congressperson, but he was up in arms and upset about the fact that Black Lives Matter was making an emphasis yeah. on uh, shopping, shopping Black during the holiday season. And he went on to talk about how um, the, the dollar in the black community circulates only for six hours and that the dollar in Jewish communities circulates for 30 days and in Asian communities for 60 days and in predominantly white communities is it's, it's, it's constant. It's, constant. It's, a, it's a constant circulation. And then we have $1.3 tri trillion of income, but only 2% is spent in our communities. And so um, 
I think it's important to shop small businesses, but also it is important to also uh, patronize our black owned businesses as well. And so um, Tanya, I was asking you about how, it, how you came to be in business and what resources you utilize in order to, um, to be uh, successful in business. You know, for me, it was, I educated myself. You know, it's, I think, I know we had this conversation before about, you know, what we learn in school, right? Where does this start? We need to bring the trades back and we need to teach entrepreneurial um, ship in schools. But, you know, I sit on both sides of that argument because I think having a formal education is very, very important. I think there is absolutely nothing wrong with working for someone to garner that knowledge and that information that you necessarily need to be successful as an entrepreneur. I'm glad that I sit in corporate America and have an opportunity because I didn't have a lot of the same pitfalls as others did when they were starting their businesses. So I think it's very, very important to educate yourself by utilizing services in the community like Erica and President's Council. Like I said, I can't say enough about them because when I went to them, I had my business plan. I had a lot of the things already set in motion and Erica just took it and ran with it. And like I said, she found Tandy and Tandy was like, let's go. So it's all about education, preparation and knowledge. The more work you do for yourself, the quicker that you can elevate and you can move. But one of the things I just wanna make sure that I put out there, cause I emphasize this to my staff, to my team and to people that I mentor, entrepreneurship is not also for everybody either. And I think a lot of times we've planted those seeds in our young people's mind that if you don't become an entrepreneur, you're not successful. Mm -hmm. And if you do work for someone else or, or have a corporate job, you're less successful. I'm just blessed because I've been able to maneuver both worlds. Both worlds yeah. And I know a lot of people who do, but it shouldn't be one or the other. Mm -hmm. I think what we have to do is educate our children and educate people and mentor people in both paths and let them decide what the best route is to take. But the crux of it all for me is education. Right, exactly. You have to be <laughs> exposed to things and know mm -hmm. about things in order to, to utilize them. And that's yeah. why I'm, I'm glad you said what you said about um, Erica and mm -hmm. having found her, and then in turn, her uh, introducing you to Tandy. And so yes. Erica, what exactly is, is it that you do with the President's Council and what can they offer to business owners, small business owners? Sure, so the President's Council um, provides a, a, a myriad of services. The most important being what we call our at your business services. And so as a member of the President's Council Business Chamber, which is Northeast Ohio's only Black business chamber, um, you will have access to HR, IT, um, social media, PR, marketing, legal, and accounting services at our cost. And we think this is important, or we know this is important, because these are resources, human capital and financial capital, that most of our Black businesses are missing to be able to mm -hmm. scale and sustain. And the other thing I would say about patronizing small businesses, and in particular, Black small businesses and Black women-led small businesses, yeah. is that mm -hmm. we have to be strategic and intentional about it. Mm -hmm. And so when you're looking to do business, when you're looking to shop for the holidays, go to the presidentscouncil.com website and look at all of our members that are on that website and be intentional about, I'm going to use this caterer for the holidays. I'm going to yes. use transportation service. Yes. I'm going to shop at this boutique. I'm going to go get my hair cut here. I'm going to take my dog here to be groomed. <laughs> Any and every service that you need is part of this Black small business community. And I know we're talking about small businesses, but if anybody knows me, you know that I'm always going to say Black owned, Black led. And I would be remiss if I did not say we have to also support our Black led nonprofit organizations that yes. are directly providing the resources to right. these Black businesses mm -hmm. that are directly providing jobs and services in our communities. Right. Well, oh. Erica, also talk about your PC scholars because you're bringing up the next generation of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like Tanya and uh, Pamela uh, mentioned the importance of entrepreneurship training, we have a PC Scholars program that um, is a cohort of students. We've graduated about 150 to date, um, both PWI and HBCU graduates. Um, and we provide them with curriculum that's 
driven by entrepreneurship? How do you run a business? There are so many people that I have hired, young professionals that don't even know how to write a deposit slip. And so how do you Mm -hmm. even operate a business and you don't know how, they don't even know what depositing a check is. So we take those life skills that Black students, again, need, Mm -hmm. and we um, prepare them to go to and through college. We provide them with financial scholarships, but we also provide them with paid internships with Black-owned businesses so that they can be in the company and exposure, work alongside, learn from, and grow with Black-owned businesses. Oh, that's a wonderful program. Excellent program. You know, and I bet you there's a lot of people who don't even know about that program. So I'm glad that we have this platform to to let people know about that. Because like I said, there's so many people probably that want to go into business, but they just don't know what to do. Where to start. Uh, Where to start. They may just try themselves and then they find that they fail and they don't have the capital. They just don't know. A lot of people are very good at what they do, but they're not business minded. They don't really know. Like you said, if you don't see yourself in the role, you don't think you could be it. But like in technology, Mm -hmm. I'm extremely excited to hear that you have a role in tech for people Mm -hmm. of color. Yeah, that's what Tandy, uh, that's what you were talking about, right? Yeah, please tell us a little more because that's an industry that we have not saturated Mm -hmm. and penetrated, I mean. Yes. Yeah, so at Urban City Colors, we're a culturally focused, community-based tech training center, and we focus um, right on the tech roles and tech jobs here, and we have over 250 students enrolled, all Black. Um, We're basically providing uh, tech training for Black people, and we focus on that 2% tech gap for minorities because... 98% 98% is are other groups um, taking advantage of mm-hmm. all the jobs and um, opportunities in tech. Um, and we focus on um, programming. Um, so we have our own coding boot camp, cybersecurity boot camp, as well as IT support roles, um, graphic design and social media management roles. And our, our we created an entire ecosystem. So yes, all of our students are um, supporting other black owned businesses that are small. Um, and we have other corporations even looking to hire our students because they were having some diversity and inclusion problems. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah. all of our there students are <laughs> diverse <laughs> and trained. And then- um, so yeah, so we're doing really well in that area, um, creating that yeah. ecosystem and, and nurturing and guiding them. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. And now finally, Felicia, uh, you want to tell us a little bit more about what uh, you offer and what you can offer to small businesses as well? Absolutely. At the Urban League Small Business Development Center and in our Entrepreneurship Center as a whole, um, we provide everything from concept. We work with individuals coming in from the point, I'm sick of my corporate job. I don't want to work for nobody else. (laughs) Tell me what's good, what's hot. And and we love people to come in like that because we can help them to think outside of the box, sort of what Tandy was saying. And let's not open up another barbecue joint. Let's go here and um, maybe we will open up a uh, manufacturing company for solar panels because mm-hmm. energy is really hot right now. Mm-hmm. So, or maybe we'll open up a place where we're going to create batteries because everybody is going towards electric vehicles. All cars have to be electric by 2030. So we need to think outside of the box with that. But mm-hmm. um, we are there to help people, like I said, to have a great concept, We help them through the process of registering their businesses. We ensure that they have a great platform to launch their businesses off of. And for those existing owners, okay, so maybe you went in, you did it. You was like, hey, I got an idea. You didn't think about books, records, accounting, none of that. So we will come in, (laughs) we offer a program called like Becoming Bankable. And we do that in uh, cooperation Mm -hmm. also with the President's Council. And we teach our business owners about your profit and loss statement, the cash flow, um, all those things, how to use QuickBooks and how to be able to respond quickly. Because one of the things that we saw super fast was during COVID when all of those grants and loans were available, our business owners didn't, they weren't prepared to respond. So we're there 
Yeah, so we and then all of a sudden really... everybody had a business. Too. Oh yeah, they all had a business. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what it is. Yes. That's another conversation, yes, ladies. That, that yes. is definitely but another conversation. Is, you guys are bringing resources that many people many had no people. idea okay. about. This is mm-hmm. wonderful. This I'm is a great you, conversation. I have learned so no. much from you, women. I, I you I'm powerful a powerful black women. You have women. brought a wealth of knowledge. There are going to be people who are going to say, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna contact the president's council, or I'm Mm -hmm. going to contact um, uh, the Urban Urban League and find out what Mm -hmm. more information I can get. But uh, we are going to have to wrap up. I do want to reemphasize for people to please shop locally, shop at your small businesses, go to those boutiques. I love a good boutique when I can find something and somebody will say, where'd you get that from? And And I say, I got that. And I'm a big I'm a big resale person too. I love a, a nice resale store. Yes. Um, but uh, I, I really appreciate you ladies. Thank you so much. You've been a wealth of information and thank you once again. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, Enjoy. ladies. Oh, that was so wonderful. I so good. enjoyed all of those. Those women. are some dynamic. They women. were very dynamic. And I learned a lot. You know, there's so many resources that people do not know about. And they should take advantage of because I'm telling you, I have met so many people and I say, you know, you're so good at that. You should do, do you know, yeah. make it a business. And they're like, oh, I just do it as something, you know, I just, I, it's a hobby. It's a I hobby. don't think I have the time. And it's like, turn those hobbies into actual businesses. Even if you don't want to have a, a brick and mortar building or anything, everything. But make a profit. Done, I mean, so you much do is it. done online anyway. I was impressed know? with the fact that she says she works full time. And still has these two stores. I mean, that's yes, a, that's, that's Tanya, Yes, Tanya, Tanya man. Yes, that was impressive. She teaches, and then she also has these stores. I, you know, it's it just goes to show that you can do anything if you put your mind to right. it. However, like they said, you have to be educated about right. what it is you're doing. You can't just jump out, you know, into something without knowing all about it, without studying it, without understanding what your business plan is going to be, all of that stuff. So I will say, take advantage of the resources, um, check out the President's Council or anywhere that you are in the whole country, there are resources that you can utilize. Make sure that you patronize small businesses, especially during the holiday season. I mean, they need you and we want them to be there for 2022. That's absolutely right. So thank you so much. If you like this segment or if you like our show in general, please like and subscribe. You can watch us on our Facebook page at Public Opinion Show. We also now are on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So until next time for another episode of Public Opinion, bye-bye. Bye-bye.